Hello, cellists, violists, trombonists, bassists, anybody who cares about the third cello suite. Um, today I'd like to talk about the Saraband from the C major uh, Bach's cello suite. Um, this is one of my favorite movements and uh, it's uh, relatively easy. Um, I usually choose it to play as an encore after a concerto, for example. Um, it's short, C major is a great uh, key for the cello, the lower strings ring so naturally and um, um, and it just sits well on the instrument but um, there's also a lot to discover here and I wanted to talk uh, in particular about uh, bringing out different notes in chords. Um, when we play a chord and especially when we play a chord in a work by Bach, um, it is wonderful to bring out one, just one of the voices uh, in the first repeat perhaps and a different voice in the second repeat. So, um, um, the E going to D here, and then the E to F, that's the middle voice, so. purple in my score. Um, try to give more weight to your bow on these notes. Then let's look at the top voice, the one I marked in green. Uh, the C going to B, and then B flat to A. So. Practice trying to bring that top voice out more and then bringing the middle voice out more. Uh, I like to use one for the first repeat and then the other for the second repeat. Um, also notice that in these two bars, the first and second bars of the saraband, the middle voice goes down and then it goes up. So. <laughs> can shape your phrasing um, depending on which voice you decide to bring out at each repeat. Um, the top voice on the other hand just goes down so um, you may experiment with uh, playing the dotted note a bit shorter uh, not quite double dotted but not perfectly measured either so technique creates movement and tilt and um, uh, this dance can easily feel bogged down if you uh, play it very much metronomically divided. Um, let's uh, remember of course also that both first and second beats are stressed in a saraband um, uh, which reversely can mean that the third beat is lighter. So. <laughs> In terms of division into bars, I see the third and fourth bars um, as being tied together, uh, whereas the first and second are not. So, um, Looking at bar number five, uh, the third beat is uh, arsic, um, i.e. the musical gesture goes up. Um, and then the third beat of bar six is thetic, uh, meaning the gesture is going down. So, um, showing that uh, the first is going up and the second is going down. I like experimenting with taking a bit of time before the F sharp up B2 bar 8. And then um, again, uh, try only taking time in one of the repeats. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, 
it, perhaps. Um... In bar nine, there's a wonderful trick that I learned from Anna Belsma. Um, in his book, The Fencing Master, he talks about bringing out the middle voice by uh, starting that open D a bit before the rest of the chord. So I'm exaggerating now. <laughs> in tempo, it will be... Um, something like that. Um, uh, it really, really brings out that middle voice. I think it's a wonderful <laughs> trick. Um, so uh, again, the F on the second beat can be played before the rest of the chord, um, which I just did. Um, and the same thing repeats on bar 10. Um, also, notice the open G in bar 9 changes to a G sharp in bar 10. So. Um, <laughs> So obviously we're talking about the low G. And that's uh, beautiful if you bring that out. Um, here is another way to uncover the treasures uh, in this short movement. Look at the four sixteenth notes on the third beat of bar nine. Uh, they can either lead to the downbeat of uh, bar 10, like this. Or uh, you can uh, diminuendo into bar 10, so. In bar 12, we have an example similar to the one I discussed on my current video. Uh, where you can uh, use fingerings to vary your color. Uh, the first A can be played open, and the second closed on the D string. So, uh, so as you see, open A and closed A. At the end of bar 14, you can again either crescendo towards the next bar or diminuendo. how beautiful that D minor chord is going to the next bar. That D going to the open C. Etc. Starting from the upbeat to bar 21, we have two voices. Uh, practice them separately. So, uh, practice and the top and then you put them together to how fast you roll the chord here in the end um, and also which note you choose to sit on. Um, is it the bottom C or is it the top C? So um, let's see. <laughs>
also don't be shy about using a bow uh, on that chord for the first repeat. Um, so. <laughs> connection to uh, bar nine again if you play on the up bow. Um, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.